start recording. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, a Puppet webinar about uh, um, Puppet web interfaces. Uh, my name is Walter Heck. I'm from uh, from Olin Data. Uh, we uh, provide uh, open source training and consulting, and a large part of what we do is uh, uh, is Puppet. And as such, I would uh, like to share today with you uh, the main uh, contenders in the uh, Puppet dashboard. Uh, range of uh, uh, options. I didn't uh, prepare so much uh, slides as I thought I'd just show you uh, the uh, the actual dashboards and what their uh, functionality is. Um, so uh, uh, it'll be more, um, uh, how to say that, more uh, um, realistic. Um, sorry, I muted someone who was uh, creating a lot of uh, background noise. Um, so we'll be discussing four different uh, uh, web interfaces. Um, we have the, uh, the the Puppet Enterprise Console, uh, the Foreman, uh, Puppet Explorer, and Puppet Board. Um, those are the four main ones. There is also um, Puppet Dashboard, but it hasn't been uh, really uh, supported or updated for quite a while. Um, Puppet Labs uh, uh, um, is not is no longer developing it. There are some community uh, um, contributions, but it's not uh, nothing more than uh, uh, support for uh, the next version of Ruby. Um, so I, I thought I'd leave that one out. Um, then there is also uh, the the newer version of Red Hat Satellite, but um, the reason I didn't include it is because it is based on the foreman. So when I show you the uh, the foreman, uh, you will also already see uh, uh, much of the functionality that goes into uh, um, the actual uh, um, satellite uh, product. Um, there might be more uh, um, dashboards, but these are the ones that I'm aware of. Uh, so uh, uh, these are the ones I'll, uh, I'll focus on uh, for today. Um, quick, very quickly for uh, initial uh, uh, overview before we actually go and, uh, and look into each one of them. Uh, the Puppet Enterprise Console is a commercial uh, option by, uh, by Puppet Labs. Um, it comes uh, with the uh, uh, Puppet Enterprise uh, uh, offering um, as well as some, uh, some other stuff. Um, and uh, uh, it's their preferred way of uh, managing a, a Puppet repository. It's very uh, puppet centric, so it's, it's focused on showing you what your puppet repository, uh, what your puppet infrastructure is doing, and um, it allows you to uh, control it to a certain extent as well without really having to write any code. Um, the uh, foreman is uh, um, uh, originally created by a, a, a friendly guy called uh, Ohad Levy uh, for. Uh, Red Hat, uh, uh, and um, as the project matured, uh, Red Hat started to see the potential. And um, uh, now there is a, a large team at, uh, at Red Hat working on the Foreman project. So the Foreman is fully open source. It's completely free. Um, but the, uh, the Red Hat satellite offering is not free, and it's based on the Foreman. So it's the Foreman plus a bunch of uh, extra uh, stuff uh, to make it work well with the other uh, Red Hat products. Um, but the Foreman remains to this day uh, and, and will remain uh, completely free and open source. It's uh, very actively developed, uh, but it takes a, a puppet as one of the parts of a uh, infrastructure. So um, with the foreman, you can also um, uh, deploy new virtual machines, for instance. You can um, do a whole bunch more things than just manage your puppet infrastructure. And then um, besides that, there are two uh, more um, uh, web interfaces, Puppet Explorer and Puppet Board. Um, both of these are... Um, graphical user interfaces that uh, um, show you the, uh, um, the information that is in PuppetDB. So when you're using Puppet, uh, a lot of information gets stored in PuppetDB. And this information is what you can see when, you, uh, uh, when you're looking at the Puppet Explorer or Puppet Board uh, web interfaces. Um, interestingly enough, Puppet Board was uh, created first by uh, um, I 
forget what his name was. Daniel Sleiter, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and um, he later moved on to Spotify. So he works for Spotify now. And uh, Spotify made Puppet Explorer. Uh, so uh, I'm not entirely sure what happens to the development of Puppet Board. I looked into it yesterday. There doesn't seem to be a ginormous amount of uh, uh, investment. It's it's become a, com a puppet community project. And I have seen that uh, uh, Daniel Slater has uh, still merged in uh, uh, pull requests from the uh, community. But I believe that most likely he himself is, uh, is no longer uh, working on it. Um, and Puppet Explorer is made by the guys at Spotify. Um, so we'll compare the two and uh, 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 see what the, what the, the differences are. Um, first of all, I created a, uh, uh, a Vagrant file here. Uh, I'll upload it after the, uh, uh, after the session. Um, this Vagrant file here shows you, uh, it brings up all of these four uh, dashboards. So I've created uh, three, four machines. Um, we have a Puppet Enterprise master, which uh, contains Puppet Enterprise, uh, uh, the, the Puppet master, as well as the uh, 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 as the uh, Enterprise console. We have the uh, open source Puppet master, which contains a uh, uh, just a, a simple open source Puppet master, uh, and then down here we have a uh, Puppet DB uh, node, which contains just Puppet DB. Uh, and uh, it also uh, uh, contains the, um, uh, the Puppet Explorer and the uh, Puppet Board uh, web interfaces. Uh, you can split them off, but uh, I, I kept them here uh, centrally uh, because it's easier with the SSL certificates that are needed for the API calls. I didn't want to go through the trouble of setting it up, uh, so I cheated a little bit. And then the last one here is the, uh, uh, the foreman. Um, uh, VM. So that together brings up four virtual machines. You can see them here. Uh, and I can do on each one of them a puppet agent run. That doesn't do much now because it has already uh, implemented the, uh, the, the dashboards that we're looking for. Um, so let's dive into each one of them uh, a, a bit more uh, in depth. Um, here we have the, uh, the Puppet Enterprise console as the, uh, the enterprise offering from, uh, from Puppet Labs, as I explained. Um, up here in the top, uh, we, have, uh, we see no node requests. Uh, if we click it, it'll, it brings us to a separate uh, little interface where uh, we would uh, see um, uh, uh, certification uh, requests if there are any. So when a new node connects to the Puppet Master, you would see the, uh, the, the, signing, uh, the certificate signing request here, and you can sign them from the web interface. Um, here we can see the licenses. Uh, the Puppet Enterprise comes with uh, 10 licenses for free. You can download it and, uh, and start using it uh, today. Um, and so, we have a, a number of different parts of the Enterprise Console. We have the events uh, part where we can uh, see uh, the status of, uh, of our current infrastructure. Um, I won't go uh, uh, too deep into it um, because uh, uh, for some reason it's not loading the Puppet uh, run that I, uh, that I just did. Um, Ah, because uh, nothing actually changed. Um, so the uh, the event inspector only shows you um, the um, the current state of the last uh, puppet run. So if something changed in the last puppet run, you would see it here. Um, to show you quickly, uh, P master. We'll do a, uh, we'll make a quick uh, change. 
and see what happens. So when you run a Puppet Agent run with a dash dash debug, you can see all the things that it's trying to uh, to see. Um, so for instance, we can look at don't want to change anything. It's totally going to break that Puppet Master. Anyway, I guess it's not really important for now. Um, the, 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 the point is that the uh, event inspector only shows you the last puppet run that happened, uh, and it shows you all the events that happened there. So it's very good for when you uh, have failed puppet runs. Uh, in the event inspector, you can see why it's failing and where exactly it's failing. Um, the second part is the uh, node uh, uh, overview. Uh, which shows you a list of all the uh, uh, nodes in your uh, connected to this Puppet Master. Um, in my uh, setup, there are four machines, but uh, three of them are connected to the open source Puppet Master. So the only uh, node we see here in the Enterprise Puppet Master is the uh, pemaster.olandata.vm. Um, this uh, uh, this node, when I click on it, I can see the uh, the latest report of that uh, of that node. Uh, which is very, fairly uneventful because uh, uh, everything was already in order. Uh, we can see some metrics here about how long different uh, resource types, uh, how much time different resource types occupied. We can see the actual log here and some events that, uh, that happened. Um, So uh, one of the things we can see here in the, in the node uh, um, view is here on the left-hand side, we see a summary of all of our nodes. Uh, in this case, we have one node and nothing changed in the last puppet run, so it is in uh, green unchanged. Um, the, uh, um, the overview here is good for when you have a, a large number of nodes and you want to drill down into the ones that failed because you can just click on it and see the failed uh, nodes. Um, we can click down into a node specifically as well. Then here in the top we get the node classification where we can see which groups does this uh, uh, node belong to and which are the parent groups of that uh, node uh, and in which environment do those uh, uh, groups uh, run. Then down here we can see uh, all the classes that will end up on this node uh, as defined in the enterprise console. So if you have a site.pp, you won't uh, see those classes show up here, but these are the, uh, the classes that are defined inside your uh, enterprise console. Uh, and for each class, it's, uh, it shows you what is the group uh, that um, uh, made this class be assigned to this uh, node. So because this node is a member of the PE master group, it gets the PE repo platform EL7 x86 uh, uh, node. We can click on the uh, group to go straight to the, uh, um, to the group, to the uh, node group. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, here, down here, we see the, uh, the list of uh, facts. Somebody says that they cannot hear any sound. Does anybody else not hear any sound? Because that would mean I was talking for a while. I'll just continue in the... Uh, uh, thinking that uh, everybody can hear me. Um, so uh, 
yeah, and in the enterprise console, uh, a, a node is a member of uh, uh, one or more groups, and the groups define which classes uh, that node gets. So uh, this is new in Puppet Enterprise 3.7, the new node classification, rule-based. Um, so you don't specifically define this node gets that class, but you define this node belongs to that group, and that group gets these classes. So you can see, for instance, the PE master group here. Uh, you can see that the uh, PE master .vm node is pinned to this group, um, and therefore it matches the. Uh, you can see it here in the matching nodes, and therefore in the classes uh, uh, tab of the of that specific node group, you can see that the PE repo platform uh, class is assigned. The PE repo uh, class is assigned. Puppet Enterprise Profile Master, all of these classes are uh, assigned to any node that is in this group. So if I would had, have here uh, uh, more nodes in this group, they would all get the same classes. Um, there are two ways to get to add a node to a group. One is uh, with a, uh, a effect-based rule. So you can say, hey, if the uh, uh, FQDN uh, matches regex, uh, dot star dot own data dot vm it'll tell you here the number of nodes that match the reason it can tell you that is because uh, uh, it looks into puppet db and of course this is the one node that we already had um, so they get these classes. We can assign uh, global variables that uh, uh, nodes can use in this uh, uh, in this group, and we have here the uh, activity. Um, one of the downsides of uh, uh, of using this kind of classification is that it's very you get this uh, activity log here, but it's very difficult to see what did my infrastructure look like last week. Um, Versioning of your uh, uh, infrastructure is also quite uh, difficult uh, in, in this way. The good thing is that uh, um, people don't need to write Puppet code to assign classes to uh, nodes. So it depends a little bit on what you want, whether or not this is a great uh, way to, uh, to manage your uh, classes. Uh, next up is the uh, reports tab where you can just specify, uh, you can look at the reports of, uh, of past Puppet runs. Um, it's not uh, much different than it was in the nodes view as I saw here, as we saw here before. Inventory search um, uh, is interesting. Uh, we can search for specific facts. Uh, You can search for all the facts where the OS family is Red Hat, for instance, especially if you have a larger infrastructure and you're looking for nodes that have a specific uh, uh, um, set of properties, this can be uh, very useful. Access control, this is the other big thing that is new in Puppet Enterprise 3.7, uh, is uh, uh, where you can set up uh, users and their uh, rights. There's here external directory, so you can uh, hook it up to your uh, LDAP uh, um, or your Active Directory if you uh, if you have one. Um, here in the Users tab, we list all the users. In this case, we only have an administrator and an API user. And then here, User Roles, uh, we define groups of users. Uh, so in, in this case, for instance, the administrator uh, uh, role has two users uh, added to it. And on the Permissions tab, we specify which permissions that a uh, uh, user has. This is very uh, fine-grained uh, uh, permissions, so it's really easy to, uh, uh, to make people uh, only be able to do the things that you want them uh, uh, to do. And lastly, uh, activity uh, shows an activity log if you make any changes to this uh, role. Um, on the live management tab, this is quite interesting. Uh, is a uh, uh, M Collective. Uh, uh, this is basically a web, web web interface to M Collective, and as you saw here on the left hand, it took a while to load. The reason that it took a while to load is that it uh, was actually uh, sending out M Collective messages to the whole infrastructure to ask for all the nodes to respond. In this case, there 
there is only one uh, uh, node connected to this uh, infrastructure. So that's the only one that uh, showed up. Um, the way this works is that here on the left hand side, we have uh, uh, the node selection screen. So here in a node filter uh, thing, uh, uh, sorry. We can filter and as you see it says finding nodes so it's actually going out to um, it, it actually sends out a uh, uh, an m collective message to the whole infrastructure for nodes to respond not entirely sure what i'm doing wrong here ah, because i set the node filter here So you can search for uh, nodes in your network. Still not working uh, correctly, but doesn't really matter. What what happens is that here on the left hand side, you uh, on the top uh, part, this part, you filter uh, for the nodes that you want to see. It shows you here the resulting uh, nodes, and then here on this uh, uh, end, you. Uh, um, you select the nodes that you want to do something with on the right hand side of the screen. So we have here the PE master data.vm node. And then on the right hand side, we can either browse resources of specific types uh, here, uh, or we can uh, control puppet, which is the more interesting part. So I can uh, disable puppet here on all of the nodes that I selected on the left hand side, just to make sure that puppet cannot run. So when I uh, say disable puppet, uh, I can disable the, uh, the puppet run. And the interesting part is that it locked puppet to run uh, in any way. So even if I go to the command line now and I say puppet agent dash, uh, dash T, I can still not run puppet. And it says, hey, Walter is evil, so we cannot do anything. Uh, I can also enable. Of course, uh, and then a run once is where we invoke a single puppet run on uh, all the machines that we've selected on the left hand side. This is very useful if you've just made some uh, some changes to your infrastructure and you want puppet to run right now instead of later. Uh, simply use M Collective to uh, to run the puppet agent, and I can uh, do a status here where it gives you the um, last time. Each, uh, each of those agents ran and uh, whether they are enabled or not. We have some advanced uh, tasks as well. I'll, I won't go into that. You can uh, uh, restart services if you want to. So you could restart Apache on all the machines on the left-hand side and uh, um, that can be uh, very useful. So that's the Puppet Enterprise console. Um, uh, very uh, uh, nice if you uh, are using a Puppet Enterprise uh, to begin with because the, the setup is very easy. Um, if you're uh, using Puppet Open Source, then uh, unfortunately the Enterprise console won't be uh, available. Um, the other three uh, offerings that I'll uh, go through, I'll go a little bit faster, are um, uh, open source. So you can use them with, uh, with Puppet Open Source. Um, here we have uh, the foreman. Uh, in uh, the foreman, uh, a, a large part of it works the same way. We have a, a, a nice dashboard that shows us the, uh, the status of, uh, of the hosts that are in our uh, um, infrastructure. I can see the latest uh, uh, run. Uh, I see that the last time I ran Puppet, there was three failures, but actually, the last time I ran, there was nothing, no changes. So I can click into that. I can see here a nice visual report of the uh, uh, of the puppet run. Um, I can go to the host details where I can see how long it took to run the puppet agent each time I ran it, uh, the number of resources that uh, are managed. Um, And here uh, uh, on the left-hand side, uh, we can see 
some of the uh, the metrics of the puppet runs. It's a bit empty right now because uh, uh, this uh, uh, puppet agent, uh, sorry, the, the foreman runs its own uh, uh, puppet master at the moment because that was uh, easier to uh, to set up. So there's only one uh, uh, machine connected uh, to this uh, puppet master, as you can see. So it's only foreman.onlydata.vm. Um, so you can browse through reports. Uh, it has a nice uh, drop-down uh, selection of what you can uh, uh, what you can do. So you can actually click through um, all of your uh, uh, how to say that? All of the, the types of filters that you can uh, uh, do in these reports. Um, here, in fact, uh, you can uh, uh, look for uh, specific uh, uh, fact variables. So you can say facts dot uh, And it'll show you all the machines, all the hosts that have a fact that matches that, uh, uh, in this case, regular expression. Um, very, uh, very simple, but very uh, powerful. And then we have here statistics. This is uh, nice for a dashboard on the wall, uh, especially if you uh, um, have a larger number of, uh, of hosts in it. Um, here on the... Um, uh, on the second part, we have the, all the, a list of all the hosts. Uh, and here we can see all the hosts. In, in, uh, the foreman works much more with uh, um, a whole view of your infrastructure. So uh, these nodes are aware of the operating system, uh, what type of uh, hardware they're running on, in this case, a, a virtual box, um, which uh, provides for some interesting uh, extra functionality. We can uh, set the puppet environment here you can see uh, which hosts are running in the uh, production environment. Um, since uh, the foreman also supports provisioning, uh, in uh, the provisioning uh, setup uh, section here, you, can, uh, you have to add uh, operating systems as they are available. So you would say uh, Debian 7, 8, Debian 7.8, Debian, uh, what is that? Wheezy still, and on which architectures they are available. Submit. This creates a new uh, uh, operating system uh, type in um, in the foreman. Um, then uh, we have installation media where we can specify where we uh, uh, get the, uh, the the package repositories. Um, we have uh, provisioning templates, so it, it supports a whole bunch of uh, provisioners. Uh, Kickstart is in here somewhere. Kickstart is in here. Uh, Juno's uh, uh, Debian Precedes. Uh, these are the uh, ways to provision new machines. Um, then we have installation media, so if you want to uh, um, install uh, the uh, Linux distribution uh, straight from a repository, then uh, here it can download the uh, specific um, uh, ISO that is needed to uh, uh, to start up the, uh, uh, to provision the, the, the virtual machine of your choice. Uh, hardware models, It doesn't really have a lot of memory, so uh, <laughs> gets a bit tough. Um, so it, it did a, a, a query for all the hardware models, especially if you have if you're running on bare metal. This can be very nice to be able to see uh, what kind of uh, hardware you have uh, in your machine. This gets automatically uh, populated. Um, in the foreman works with host groups. 
so a host group can be, for instance, uh, Windows servers in your London data center, whatever. Um, you can set all of the whole nodes in a host group to have a specific uh, Puppet CA and Puppet Master, uh, as well as a production. Um, and then you see one. Uh, we don't have any available classes right now because I didn't load any uh, uh, any up. But uh, you can set up uh, specific uh, uh, domains. So the point is that well, later on when you add a node to this um, uh, to this uh, uh, host group, it can automatically inherit all of these settings from the from the host group it belongs to. Uh, we can have Puppet class parameters, so you define class parameters on host group level, uh, which allows you to uh, uh, to be much more uh, um, uh, dynamic in uh, uh, specifying which nodes get what uh, kind of uh, uh, settings. Um, obviously, uh, the foreman was originally created with uh, Puppet in mind, um, but it, uh, it, it supports, uh, there's a, a chef plugin now as well. Um, However, Puppet is still very much a uh, first-class uh, citizen, even though it's technically a plugin. Um, so you can specify Puppet environments, uh, which you can import from your uh, from your Puppet master, or you can specify new environments. Uh, the classes get loaded uh, from disk. Uh, that will most likely not do anything right now because there are no classes on that. Uh, yeah. So this can import uh, classes from uh, from disk. So if I were to go here and say puppet module install puppet labs Apache, we'll let that run. Um, and then here in infrastructure uh, setting, we have uh, smart proxies. So a puppet uh, sorry, Foreman works with the uh, smart proxies. So you install a proxy on different machines in your uh, uh, network. Um, so you can have one on your TFTP server, Puppet uh, Masters. Uh, so they don't have to run on the same machine as the Foreman. This is very nicely done in, uh, in the Foreman, these uh, smart proxies. So for each uh, um, smart proxy, Uh, in the configuration file, you specify which features are turned on for that uh, specific smart proxy. So if you have your TFTP and your DNS server on the same server, you will have a smart proxy uh, that has those functionalities uh, enabled. Um, that way, uh, you can have a very uh, flexible distributed setup uh, that still works as a, uh, as a single uh, whole. Um, Compute resources, so you can, uh, uh, the foreman works by default uh, easily uh, if you install the plugins with uh, uh, EC2 um, as well as Google Compute. Um, there is a support for overt and, uh, and libvert, so uh, it can work with uh, OpenStack as well, and you can uh, um, provision machines straight into uh, uh, Amazon or straight into OpenStack if you set things up here correctly. Uh, but this is a bit out of the uh, scope of this uh, uh, session, I would say. Let's see if our Puppet module install is ready. Yes. So that is ready. Um, Puppet classes. So I can say update. I only gave it 500 megs of RAM, so it's really uh, struggling. But as you see, now it, uh, it imported all of these uh, classes. And I can now, uh, uh, if I go to my host, uh, and I say edit. I can either add classes here directly, um, or the better way would obviously be to go through the host groups. 
uh, create a host group and assign the class to the host group instead of straight to the to the host itself. Um, there's LDAP authentication as well, uh, users, uh, roles, all of that is uh, is nicely uh, implemented. There are a number of plugins as well, so uh, depending on what you're doing with your uh, Puppet Master, uh, that might be worth uh, looking into as well. But right now, I want to move on to Puppet Explorer and Puppet Board. Um, let's do uh, Puppet Board first. Um, so Puppet Board is a... Uh, um, uh, basically a view to what you see in the, um, uh, to the information in your PuppetDB. It doesn't really provide you uh, uh, like uh, the Foreman and, and Puppet Enterprise console. Uh, it doesn't really provide you the way, the, the opportunity to, uh, um, or the functionality to, uh, to classify hosts or to, uh, to determine what goes on a host. It only tells you what the status is of your uh, infrastructure. So here on the node screen, uh, we can see that there were no changes. Let me uh, make a small change. Quick file resource. Ensure present. If I now run the Puppet agent here, we can see that it created this uh, uh, file. And when I refresh here, I can see that there was a change in, uh, um, in the OS master all in data.vm uh, node. Um, as you can see, that went really fast because by the time the uh, Puppet run finishes, it has stored that information, it has uploaded that information to the PuppetDB. And uh, since what we're looking at here is basically an API uh, dashboard that looks at the PuppetDB, we can immediately see our changes. Uh, here in the Facts uh, uh, tab, we can, uh, we can search through uh, facts so we can see operating system values that we, uh, that we have. Uh, host names, for instance, and we can easily click through to all the uh, uh, facts that have OS master as their host name or operating system, for instance. Um, the reports is uh, not working because there is a, a, a bug in PuppetDB that needs to be uh, fixed first. Um, on the metrics uh, part, we can see metrics of uh, PuppetDB itself. Uh, so these are some pretty in-depth uh, metrics for PuppetDB uh, that most people will not really be interested in. And then um, the interesting part here is uh, uh, you can send a query to uh, PuppetDB. I must admit that I'm not uh, super good at the query language. This is a standardized PuppetDB query language. Um, so let's try this. Yeah, so I'm not even good enough to Right, that uh, probably it should have been a fact. Anyway, so you can send queries here to PuppetDB straight. It, this is the uh, query language that the PuppetDB uh, uh, uses. Um, so Puppet Board is fairly simple, but it provides you with a good, fast, uh, in-depth uh, view of what's happening in your uh, Puppet infrastructure. If all you're looking for is reporting, then Puppet Board as well as Puppet Explorer are, are both very good uh, good options. I have a feeling that Puppet Board won't see too much development unless community members pick it up, um, but we'll see how that uh, develops over the, over the next uh, months. Um, lastly, we have here uh, Puppet Explorer. Um, 
basically the same, only displayed in a different way, created with a different technology. Um, uh, allows us to do some fun stuff. You can uh, customize the, um, uh, how to say that? The, uh, the panels that you see here, if you want. So you can create your own uh, query and have these, uh, these panels here. Um, we can have some query examples that if we, obviously there's no nodes found, but if we I'm clearly doing something wrong. Kernel is Linux, we get these two uh, nodes. We can look through the uh, last events where we can select a date range. And look through what exactly was created and deleted and removed. And lastly here we can query to, through facts. So if we're looking for all the machines that uh, our virtual, that's 100% of the machines is, uh, is virtual. Memory free uh, in megabytes, this is the result. Um, so Puppet Board and Puppet Explorer are both uh, a bit more uh, uh, limited in functionality, but if, if simple reporting functionality is what you're looking for, this is a, a great uh, uh, solution. Um, that kind of uh, uh, concludes my uh, uh, part of the uh, um, um, my part of the webinar. Uh, I'll uh, I'll take questions now. So if you want to uh, uh, ask a question, uh, raise your hand or uh, uh, write a question in the uh, uh, in the question box, and I'll uh, um, I'll answer it. Um, let me see. Olaf uh, is unable to hear anything, unfortunately. Um, so I'll uh, um, we'll send out the uh, um, uh, the recording after this. I'm recording the whole uh, the whole thing, so we'll send out a recording anyway. Um, so you won't have any uh, issues rewatching it on uh, on YouTube on your own time. Um, Moises Cruz is asking, is it possible to combine Puppet Board or Puppet Explorer with a PE installation? Uh, yes, both Puppet Board and Puppet Explorer can work with the uh, Enterprise uh, Puppet uh, as well. Um, there's some information on it on the uh, Puppet Explorer um, uh, website uh, where uh, you can um, uh, uh, you have to do a few extra things uh, in order to make it work. But basically, the, the Enterprise Puppet DB uh, uh, is the same as the open source PuppetDB with a few extra uh, pieces of functionality, but both uh, Puppet Board and Puppet Explorer can be uh, connected to um, to PuppetDB, whether it's Puppet Enterprise PuppetDB or a, a, an open source PuppetDB. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that the um, Puppet Explorer can work with multiple PuppetDBs. Um, so if you have multiple uh, PuppetDBs, it can actually uh, be configured to, uh, to work with all of them. Um, let me... Uh, next question is uh, about Hiera interfaces. Um, I think this is a, a common uh, topic. Um, there is, in none of these uh, dashboards, is there a, a proper uh, Hiera interface. Uh, within Olin Data, we are working on uh, uh, on a project uh, to do exactly this, um, but it's not it's not ready yet. It's called Ops Theater. You can see it uh, at opstheater.com. Um, it's uh, it's in early beta, I would say, and hopefully in the next few months we'll be able to uh, uh, create a, a, a production ready version of that. And when we do, I'll be sure to uh, uh, let you know. Uh, 
Krishna is asking, is uh, Puppet Board and uh, Puppet Explorer uh, used much? Um, uh, so when Daniel Slater made Puppet Board, he created it to be using it in Nadup, which was a company that he was working in at that time. So uh, they were using it. I've seen some presentations from him uh, on uh, Puppet Board, um, and I, I know of some people using it. Um, for Puppet Explorer, this is created by Spotify, so I know that at least Spotify is using it, which uh, the advantage of that, knowing that, is that you know that it works well with a large number of nodes because uh, Spotify has uh, thousands of, uh, of nodes uh, uh, at the very least, uh, if not tens of thousands. So that's the, the, it's good to know that this works in, uh, in highly scalable uh, environments as well. Um, that's all for now. If there's any more, any more questions, then uh, now would be the time to uh, raise your hand. I have some people in the room here as well. Do you have a question? No? No, I don't. All good. All right. Then uh, I'll be uh, closing the, uh, um, the webinar now. Thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll send you a recording later today, maybe tomorrow. Um, uh, thank you very much. If you have any other questions, feel free to email me, uh, walterheck at olandata.com, uh, or tweet uh, to uh, at walterheck. Um, that's all. Thank you very much.